Hello, everybody who is, uh, who is here. Uh, my name is Guna Zucic, and I'm from, uh, I'm from Latvia. And uh, I think it's uh, quite unbelievable to say that uh, I am on tour at the moment, uh, because I think uh, that's uh, one of the few places uh, in the world uh, where the tour is uh, happening, as you see the scenery. Uh, of course, it's with, uh, with the restrictions and uh, with the uh, and uh, only seated, but still, uh, we are uh, lucky to be on tour. So, um, and I'm on a tour with the uh, Carnival Youth, uh, the band which was uh, as well on uh, uh, description what you wrote. I do manage, and uh, we work also on a European level, and uh, usually uh, spring. And autumn is touring throughout uh, Europe, but of course now it's not possible. And the band uh, was supposed to play also Last by Lab, uh, which we were looking forward to as a first uh, first uh, performances in Portugal. But they will do today uh, the digital showcase instead. So so yeah, and uh, I've been uh, in a management for I think. Uh, as long as I remember myself, because I started from being a music fan. And uh, basically, uh, in Latvia, all the music management, when it started, it was from the uh, just learning by doing, because uh, it was uh, after Soviet Union broke down, only then music industry started to, to take shape uh, and to see how it uh, how it happens in uh, in the Western countries. So, so yeah, and uh, I've been doing uh, management uh, for many years, and now with the Carnival Youth, everything I learned the first, let's say, ten years on the uh, last six years I've been on them, I could implement much more quicker. And of course, the networks which I built throughout such conferences like uh, Westway. Have been very very important to set up all the infrastructure and being able to to release albums to tour and uh, do activities outside of latvia good uh, good morning i'm uh, uh, i'm christoph uh, storvik and uh, i'm in sicily right now and i'm not on tour Unfortunately, <laughs> would would have been nice. Um, yeah, I I do a few things. So um, I manage bands, which is uh, a, a singer songwriter from Sicily called Fabrizio Camarata. But I uh, mainly work actually with American clients. So I do the co-management of a band called Clap Your Hands Say Yeah. And we've just released a new single on Wednesday. And I manage a band called Tempers. That's like a kind of dark wavy uh, stuff on Days Records. And I manage a band called Xixa, X-I-X-A. That's a, a dark goth cumbia fun act from Tucson, Arizona, who actually played Westway, I believe, in 2006, 17? 17 it was. Well, it was amazing. Um, and uh, I manage a guy from um, Ireland, a project called I Have a Tribe, that's also a singer-songwriter, but on the piano, not on the guitar, so there's a little, a little difference. Um, and he is out of the, let's say, Eliza Hennigan and, and Glenn Hansard and Villagers and so on, net, networks. Um, so besides uh, managing these uh, these five acts, I look after uh, the international relations of a festival in Sicily called Line Check. Uh, uh, excuse me, called uh, called uh, Ipsic Rock. So that's a, a boutique festival, two and a half thousand capacity, in uh, in the mountains over Cefalu in a medieval town, and uh, there we do all sorts of international uh, touring acts. Uh, last year we had uh, the national playing and we did a live stream on the independence uh, Facebook profile that was really nice so if you want to see a bit about that festival if you write uh, yeah put it into the chat it's, a rock. it's not so easy to spell YPSIGROCK 
um, and you put in the national on YouTube, you can you can check that shot, and it has a little teaser beginning at the end to see what what it's like. So uh, besides that, I also do uh, the panel program and uh, the international relations for an event in Milano called Line Check, that's happening in a month. Um, 17, 18, and 19th of November, and there it's proper as as Westway proper business conference plus a uh, plus showcase part in during the night, and we're looking into about uh, thirty five to forty online contents between online and being on ground as much as possible in in Milan, where uh, Italy's uh, music industry is is located, not not Rome. That's uh, quite quite important to know. So uh, I started managing well, uh, dubbing cassettes, uh, demo cassettes of my black metal band in the late '90s, and somebody had to send them to journals and to uh, to to labels and and organize the sessions and so on. And then yeah, just uh, just got into doing this. I. I I did quite a few years of booking Italian talent around uh, Europe, so at bands that are relatively big in uh, in Italy, and we uh, try to export them. And um, I think that might be a topic also for later. Like, what's a good point when when to export an act? Um, because I. I yeah, it, it wasn't always easy, though we had some really good results. Uh, and from that and from touring, I got into managing a German alternative rock band, which is kind of like cult, cult legend in Germany called Blackmail. And through those connections, somehow I got through to a lot of American artists, which I figured needed representation in Europe. And yeah, uh, that's, that's actually what's keeping me most busy at the moment. And with the act that is uh, um, from from Sicily, Fabrizio uh, Camarata, who actually did Westway some years ago, that was basically we started out together. I did my masters in in music in in Rome in two thousand five, and uh, that was part of my master thesis. And and we just started working together. I had no connections, him him neither. So starting out, uh, a, a German guy living in Sicily uh, with an Italian Sicilian act, trying to conquer the world is a very ambitious endeavor that is, uh, yeah, not completed yet, let's, <laughs> let's say. So um, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I spend my time with. Um, I think we're still missing is there in this chat are we marlene can you let us know if uh, they're coming in i think it's still not working for me oh, yeah. so we can talk uh, between each other yeah <laughs> when uh, at, at what point did you start with carnival youth uh, working uh, abroad uh, basically, it was from the from the very beginning of their career, which I think was one of the uh, great successes. Because what I've seen, not only in Latvia but in other countries, uh, their bands get a bit, how to say, a bit too big in their home market, and then they have to start from the beginning. Because entering each new market, you have to start from the beginning, uh, and sometimes it's already harder to put an artist who has already some comfort on on sound and uh, comfort on uh, uh, services to put back in a, in a small club in, uh, in a Riverbound Festival. So the Carnival Youth, it was uh, basically also the strategy to start uh, doing uh, their development uh, at the same time in Latvia and also abroad. Uh, for us, very important was a great escape in, uh, in uh, Brighton. It was their first um, showcase event, and it was uh, in a year when uh, the first uh, EP, uh, debut EP, uh, came out. And uh, they were still in a high school, so basically I was writing a note to their teachers. Sorry, they won't be at school. They have to play showcase in a great, uh, great escape. 
So and uh, and basically from there we got uh, already uh, first booking agent for um, from the UK and we got uh, first uh, label services deal out of uh, first showcase straight away and it kind of grow from there. But as I said, it did help that uh, previous. Uh, 10, 15 years I uh, was going to the music uh, industry conferences on a regular basis and trying to, to put my my network together. And uh, without that network, it would uh, not happen so so quickly, I believe. And uh, yeah, so now I think it's yeah the sixth year. We have uh, three uh, international albums, and the band is uh, touring Germany, Austria, Switzerland is our main market and plus uh, several uh, countries which are building this all Guna, um, we've, uh, we've, we've lost you. Guna, we've, we've lost you in the last uh, 60 seconds, maybe. So, um, dear audience, could you write into the chat when you see that uh, there is a glitch. Thank you. So let's see when, when Guna gets back to a, a proper internet connection. But yeah, that, that's something I found out uh, the hard way. If you uh, try to promote something without having a network, um, <clears throat> Uh, then it just takes a very long time. Uh, and for, for me, it took ages to understand the whole logics of the, let's say, two different models. Either you're trying to go through that, through that whole very small hole in the needle to go through the uh, UK labels, agents, and, and do the proper hype commercial kind of set up or you work in a in a uh, more let's say country by country uh, or organic way so with the with the Italian X that I promoted we had actually that that exact issue that Una was talking about uh, basically they were so big in their home country but not known outside so even even if they were on Universal or whatever, nobody would release their album properly. And, and I mean, with some we hired uh, then then TR and so on, <clears throat> and and got relatively far. But um, you can imagine Italian acts singing in Italian are immediately world music, so the market is um, relatively relatively small for this. And you have always to. To schedule the tours around what's happening in uh, in their home country, while um, the offers that you get for festivals or so are not necessarily regarding or respecting your um, uh, your uh, obligations at home. So that that led to a certain point where I also, anyway, promoted uh, shows in uh, in Berlin at. Um, pretty, let's say, pretty big uh, Italian artists as well. But that was always a one-off. And that was kind of a pity because you do shows that sell maybe like 800, 900, 1,000 tickets. But it's all expats. And the act will come once and expect anyway that you do a work that kind of does some groundwork in promotion to, to kind of build a career. But it's never going to happen if you start after 25 years or whatever to you know to to conquer the world so we had some decent successes there but uh kind of for, for myself i decided it was just more more useful to work with talent that is ready to work abroad from from the very beginning 
And um, yeah, as said, when when we started with uh, with Fabrizio, I mean, we we got kind of okay far, like having uh, having some things and doing also shows beyond the the showcase circuit and. Uh, getting a, a a very nice label in germany with with haldern pop which is connected to a very very nice uh, festival in in western germany which actually happens the same weekend as our festival in sicily um so we 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 got well to uh, to a decent point now we have to figure what what to do next that's going to be a, a a challenge and it's and there, it's all pretty much all about how can you also reinvent yourself because maybe something that you did six, seven, eight years ago, right now, is um, you know needs needs to be retold and come up with something new. Uh, and that is something that uh, for me is not always super easy to find that. Oh yeah, let's do this, and it's gonna be great. How do you work with Carnival Youth and and the other acts, Guna? Do do you continue working basically what what you've always done, or are you looking into different news, into the like m musical news, new stories, and so on? I think that the the beauty of this uh, music industry is that it's uh, changing so much because uh, uh, the first act uh, with whom I started to work internationally was. Uh, uh, was brainstorm and uh, and we did uh, our breakthrough in several European countries in uh, year 2000. And the way how you worked in year 2000, comparing to how how you work now, is two different things. And uh, and I I can totally tell tell that uh, the the European music industry and also the global industry is more accessible nowadays than it was in year 2000 for for artists who was coming uh, from not so known countries uh, or not so known or not so kind of uh, valuable in, in uh, industry terms. And uh, of course, nowadays, because of the all the digital possibilities, that's one thing that basically has uh, broken all the borders because uh, people uh, do vote who they are listening to by just listening to your act and, uh, and in terms of uh, some of the success stories from the carnival youth from the very early uh, was uh, the commercial we got uh, on Denmark uh, at the Carlsberg uh, uh, spot. And it was purely because we put uh, our first single on uh, digital platforms on Spotify. And it was found by a guy who was, uh, so I think he's class who is talking as well in one of the right. panels or and he found it on uh, on Spotify and wrote an email. Hello, uh, the song does fit uh, the criteria for the brief. And basically, yeah, we got three year uh, sync deal in Denmark for the uh, Carlsberg new brand, which most likely in back in 2000, if I would just have possibility to send uh, SEDs, uh, no one would uh, would find out about the bands from, uh, so to say, uh, not main music markets, and uh, and also through those events like Westway Lab and uh, many others I've been to, you can see that the industry is more open. Maybe uh, maybe we are not as as ready uh, for many reasons. For for example, we still have work to do on uh, making infrastructures back at home or building. Uh, funding schemes, which is uh, already in Latvia, because we do have Music Export Latvia now for as well some six, seven years, and it has done a good job on uh, lobbying uh, our music genres to the Ministry of Culture. So we got uh, for two years uh, tour support program uh, at the at Arts Council of Latvia, which was uh, never before. So it's a uh, it's pretty kind of uh, different if comparing to, to those acts I have worked with. But of course, nowadays, it's just uh, really following what's happening in the world. Of course, at the moment, we are all a bit uh, paused, everything, because uh, 
obviously we are not planning any international touring until the world will will sort uh, sort many important issues now because of COVID. But but basically it is by following what's happening and uh, and keeping an eye what's new and uh, yeah and building all the networks and from those networks uh, trying to see what are the possibilities. And I wanted just to comment as well what you were telling about uh, uh, artists uh, going to play to, let's say, uh, also some Latvian artists or I know artists from Poland, if they will go to play in London, it will be, uh, if, and if they are quite known back at home, it will be very hard to break outside of audiences which consist of the diasporas. So I think that's going to come on, uh, uh, come on, it's not a problem, but it's a bit uh, kind of challenge how to reach uh, the local audiences beyond your diasporas. That's, I think, yeah, uh, every every artist, if they uh, succeed in their home country and then try to go to major markets, those are the first people who is, from one point, it's good you show that there is an audience, but then it's harder to kind of break into general public. Yeah, what, um, <clears throat> what I kind of uh, think now is that um, in an ideal scenario, you have a management team that is very experienced and has all the connections. And you have an artist that uh, is uh, young and willing to, to sleep under the table during a tour and just work really hard and do whatever they need to do because that's the, the international competition that you have to face uh, then if you can get um, support funding great I mean we finally now have a export office in Italy since two years who are doing a fantastic job though their funds are relatively limited which is a um, which is a pity um, since the that they're so good uh, and it's kind of kind of strange that this is only happening since two years because Italy is one of the world's top 10 life markets so, so it's very very surprising that the infrastructure is lacking so much but it's also a very self-referential market still uh, that on the one hand it's a, a, it's it's strange on the other hand if you've been living in italy like like me it's uh, it's not so so strange anymore so yeah ideally you have a team that that knows what what to do and has the the active connections you have an artist that is not only willing ready determined but also very creative and kind of knows how uh, or, or just has the right artistic in, intuition because that's, I think, the the most important thing that you have somebody like really, really creative, but uh, with a pure creativity of the talent, you, I think you don't get really far because you need that sort of entrepreneurship as an artist as well. Not saying you should be your own manager or, 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 or call agents and labels. Uh, directly uh, to, to hard push your music but you you should know how uh, the business is rolling now and I think there is no more excuse for any artist like oh yeah I don't know how to uh, market my stuff on Spotify and um, that's something my manager should do yeah uh, that should be a job of your label and your manager but right now you have all the knowledge for free accessible on seminars on 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 conferences now that you can do online and and youtube tutorials and and business resources that it's you know it's, there's not really an excuse of an artist saying yeah but i didn't know you, know, you could maybe do say that 20 years ago uh, but but not right now so i think yes i i would agree with guna that um the market became more accessible uh, at the same time i mean i still struggle with uh, with upcoming acts to grow via spotify algorithms and international fan base i mean that's that's not as easy as uh, 
the platforms suggest it is really. So is there writing questions here? Yeah, we have a question. Yeah, Missy asking about uh, would we consider taking on an artist from the territory you are interested in uh, to get to know the territory and gave a better chance over there with your other artists? I think like way like uh, taking on uh, on a full management, uh, but uh, I think that's uh, gonna build. Very good. Or, of course, much more easier if you have a, a friends whom you can support and then bring over uh, them to your territory. So uh, we have uh, we have done or we have tried to do such things definitely. Uh, there's, I, I see the, there's a connection glitch, Luna. Uh, uh, but uh, at the end, uh, Jeez. You, you're back, maybe. Yes. Okay. Do you hear me? Yes. Now, now, now we can hear you. So yeah, it's been that uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the book engagement is uh, putting forward uh, a band uh, for the support for some uh, gigs in Germany. And then uh, we got back uh, the answer that uh, everybody loved it, but uh, they took their friends on tour. So, uh, <laughs> conclusion is uh, to make more friends Meaning to uh, back them to tour with us in Latvia, and uh, we have done it. But maybe because I think it's um, if the local market is important for uh, an artist from an other territory, it will be very hard to know all the details. So maybe the management, uh, not really, but some other areas, uh, yeah, we would consider. Well, in uh, in my particular case, I don't care where the artist is from. The more international I can work, the better it is. So, I mean, that's that's my roster of, of being being German in Italy with one Irish, three American, and one Italian artist. And I don't think there's uh, there's any issue. Of course, you have a downside that you don't know one specific market like really well. Of course, I know the Italian market best because I, I live here and of course I know also the German market but uh, in in the end um, the, the broader the broader I can work the the more fun it is <clears throat> and yeah we um, I think I didn't I didn't hear that quite well but I think the, when it comes to bands and and opening lots and so on with for instance with Fabrizio we did we did a lot a lot from from Patty Smith to to Villager to Amy McDonald to uh, uh, yeah uh, a lot of shows uh, when you get the occasion to to do that great and fantastic and what we never reached is getting like a proper opening tour uh, and now being in the position where I do have acts that get asked to have support being on that tour, then I, I quite understand the, the logic of, uh, uh, of the privilege in being able to choose your support. And um, I, I quite get it when an artist takes their artist being um, a, you know, when, when you have just a bunch of friends on the road, you might as an artist want to prefer that because you have to stay for maybe four, five, six weeks in a tour bus and you don't want to bring in somebody that you don't like. Uh, that's the one thing. And the other thing is that uh, you have, as a, as a main act, when you choose the support, 
you have a sort of responsibility towards your audience that the act that you present is something that is, or somebody that is going to be associated with you and and like or everything that i do has nothing to do with like uh, let's say commercial major label logics every every act is very indie and in that in that kind of uh, you know good good taste music sphere so um, I'm, I'm not part of logics like buy-ons on tours or something it's very 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 far from my universe um, so the artist who takes a, an artist on tour as a proper tour support that is going to be on all the posters it's going to be on the ticket names like on on the on the song listing kind of from when the tour is going to be announced that has of course a very very different value and being able to hop on a, sh a few shows here and there where people might have a great time for like 30 minutes, but then they made out so well, uh, forget who was the name once there, the act jumps on stage for which they actually bought the ticket. Uh, so yeah, getting like a proper tour support for my let's say, smaller artist that had unfortunately never happened. If not for like a four or five six shows or so, um, but uh, I, I get it when I, I now understand the logics of how supports of the most let's say picky acts are being selected, and it has always got to do with, or usually has got to do with like friendships and connections and uh, and mutual um, um, mutually. Uh, liking and admiring the the other's music or sometimes it's just you know somebody that was produced by the main act or uh, or a musician playing in the band or something like this and so what what i think is is very important for artists that are not located in london or in um in new york or in los angeles uh, is how the hell can you make these connections with the acts that you really want to tour with how how do you meet them and how do you make a connection yourself because i say like, I'm, i as 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 a manager i, I got to do all that business connections and 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 beer drinking with your buddies in brighton great it's a lot of fun but uh, the artist needs to speak with the other creatives so with the in my opinion with the video makers and and with with photographers and with other artists mainly so that is a that requires like if you want to operate as an artist on an international scale that that requires a lot of sacrifice in your uh, in in the, the way of how you see the world how you want to travel how much you want to dedicate of yourself and there's a fine line i think between being very authentic uh, and not like slimy pushy and and like convenience buddies but uh, to to construct um, a, a real a real interest in the other person, so that is uh, that is something that an artist gotta gotta figure out and kind of kind of set up their their own personal network, which I think is very important because it might also well be that an, as an artist at some point you want to change your manager, and if the manager had all the connections in their hand, then then you know you'll you'll have a problem as an artist if you don't have a solid network yourself. And as I said that's not necessarily you only within the business, where of course you should honor your your business partners and and be cool with them too. Even though you you're not going to be on all the emails and stuff, but hey, you want to like schmooze well with them and and make sure that the connections are are solid. But um, yeah, you definitely need a solid network of other artists that that you know that you can ask for for help. Uh, that you know you can can reach out if if you want to know something about uh, like even even your own team. You know you might have a doubt if what your team is doing is the right thing. And so if you have nobody that you can ask, then it's not a great idea. But as said to to build up that network that takes some time that you go to the places where where the stuff happens and that you get this kind of intuition that kind of 
let's say, magic feeling, which is very, very rare, of being at the right time, at the right place, and connecting with the right people. That is nothing that you can, that is not nothing that you can study. I mean, I was, I was thinking about that quite, uh, quite some time, because we just did with Clipper and say, yeah, a, a reissue of all the catalog in uh, and consolidated that with secretly Canadian uh, the, the distribution branch and our let's say our own label and now we have the time uh, to to rewrite that story and and analyze what had happened and I mean they they were kind of known as long rock uh, in the 2005 2006 years and we, uh, featured by Pitchfork and that is the official story that is not the one that we are sorry it's the, the the let's say the journalist story but that's not the whole thing so if you read like some some biography it will say like yeah they were featured on the blogs and fit for pitchfork and and that made them great but that's not the point it's more that it's one of the very rare moments where a band actually is in the right place at the right moment with the right music being connected with the right people having the right image the right team around them and then boom you can build this this case but that may be one of of a million and it's really hard to find so um, i'm kind of uh, trying to figure out how to how to work things even if they do not uh, um, yeah uh, trying to uh, to see the comment of Jose, maybe you should look for another person to work with. You mean uh, myself or uh, the, the artist? There was before they mentioned from Missia, what would you do if uh, the person is not willing to network? But I, was, oh. I wanted just to add uh, on what you were talking that uh, I think it is also uh, very nice and uh, very useful if your artists you work with uh, and they are on those uh, showcase events they do go uh, to see other bands and that they do network between them and uh, i've seen it uh, let's say with carnival youth when uh, you know they have their showcase slot uh, and they are there with the tour manager i'm at the conference place and then i come back and i see they already have made uh, like uh, in and for Montreal, they made a friend with a with a with a girl who is from Spain, who is work working there, and then uh, I think in South by Southwest with uh, Van Polishek. And it it is very important that the artists themselves they do go to the other artist showcases. It's also like commercial festivals that they they are not only coming, playing, and leaving, but just uh, and it's it's also not only to make uh, of course making networks is one thing but also to see what's happening in the world right now and uh, and to see what is your your place in it and uh, how you fit in it so so i think that is very important nowadays it's not only about uh, the management doing the work but the artists have to know uh, and have to see and have to network themselves much more than maybe a few years ago yeah, as said, and the, I mean, there, there's, I think there's for for no artist wherever they are from in the world, there's no more excuse of, uh, yeah, but I didn't know. Nobody has told me. Like if I hear from an artist, oh, but nobody told me that. I think, all right, <laughs> I should change the artist that I'm working with, uh, because it's just, you know, it's just no more locks. And uh, another thing is. Uh, if in in my experience, once you start reaching a point where I mean, of course, you have to you know you positively try to motivate your artist to be as creative as possible, and that that's all true. But uh, once you recognize that you work way more than the artist, then you might have a problem because you don't really know. Like, I mean, that's in a lot of cases. You know, who is more motivated, the artist or you? And and the artist can't say yeah, but I need I, I need my positive stimulus. And yeah, 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 that's that's right, but that's not the whole thing because basically you have somebody working on your behalf that is making no money, 
because when you start out, there's absolutely no cash to get. Maybe you can get some public funding and, and, and can get a cut from that. But generally, it doesn't compensate all the time that you put in there and the connections that you, that you open. And uh, that might also be not so great because if it's not working out as you think, it might even create a, a bad story for yourself. So anyway, you're exposing yourself to, to represent something uh, and uh, and the artist should uh, should acknowledge and just be very very willing to work really really hard on what they're doing and in my opinion that is not only um, being a great band and and doing great live shows but that is also having a very clear vision on what they want to communicate how they want to appear in 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 the public what's the kind of creative assets that they're having i mean that is to me the the ultimate independence and i've personally i've never experienced a a, a um let's say a setup where you would have like uh, 25 people working on your image around a table to study uh from scratch the you know the um, the whole campaign and so on and and just create an artist like uh, Deus Ex Machina, like kind of impresario thinking. I've, that's that's nothing that I've ever experienced, and I personally I don't really care because the I think even the most successful artists they just know really really well what they want, and uh, not only in terms of I want to play the main cage stage at Coachella. That is not a goal. I mean that's that's total bollocks it's more like how how do i reach best most people communicating my message that um uh, that that is implied in my uh, implicit in my creativity oh here's a question for us one second Hmm. Good question. I think uh, so. To uh, well, uh, well, I see Guna is uh, um, out of network. Um, yes. Well. Um, oh, you're back. Maybe you want to uh, respond to Misia first, and and then we respond to Zhao. Una, hello. Can you hear us? Uh, yes. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Now. Uh, now I'm. Oh, now I'm back. Uh, yeah. It will be. It will be challenging. I mean. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, this is uh, at the moment any activities until next spring we are not even looking into. Maybe, maybe for us, uh, time-wise, it's a bit uh, lucky in a way that uh, uh, we have to record new demos for the next album. So basically, the previous album circle is gonna finish this spring, uh, and then uh, yeah. yeah. It is a bit of uh, uh, more concentrating on the local market at the moment, definitely. But uh, but for keeping international audiences, it, it will be most likely releasing some. Uh, we are preparing the remix album, uh, EP, and then acoustic. So it will be more things to do and promoting uh, on a digital scale. But of course, for the touring artists uh, and for the live bands, it is uh, you need you need to get in front of the audience uh, but i think everybody is in the same position and they are doing the best they can and uh, as i said we are uh, still having shows in latvia even though with the restrictions which uh, i know many countries can't do at the moment so so we'll do that part and uh, then uh, yeah i don't think there is uh, an answer this question at the moment just wait and see yeah i i totally agree i mean you you try to work with 
discography products as much as you can. Uh, though, of course, it's it's fucking hard at the moment to promote anything because there's so much noise. And and furthermore, with the U.S. Select, uh, elections, it's a uh, if, at least for myself with three American acts, it's, uh, um, it's uh, it's super tough. Um, also, because Facebook is shutting down um, ad accounts and limiting um, significantly uh, the the ability to advertise at the moment, so that is a, that is a a big issue which not only I'm facing but a lot of people have issues with that currently. Uh, but I mean, the, generally, I think the the significance of music media came a bit back because if you can't play shows and promote yourself who is going to speak about your music and how are you going to reach people and that cannot only be by telling how great you are on on your own run facebook or instagram uh, or tiktok or whatever advertising but you also need somebody um that that writes about you so i think that that's the way how to um the only thing that you can really do at the moment release stuff and and try to get through to music media and and work well on on everything that can be worked through algorithms and so on and, and then okay a question on uh, Q &A. Oh, oh yeah uh, great yeah so the question about was uh, did we start it out from the booking agency of management um, I can tell that uh, when I started out, and I think still, uh, because uh, Latvia is a small country of uh, only uh, less than a two million people live here, so it means the market and the industry is very small, and it will be very often that uh, you are not only manager, but you are also acting as a booking agent, you are acting as a promoter, you take care of uh, locally as well as a record label. Uh, and then working internationally, uh, you do uh, get uh, all the other um, infrastructure on board, like booking agents and label services and so on. So basically, it's, uh, you do everything, and then and then uh, you just uh, reach out. But uh, I don't think there is one formula how to start. Is it the booking agency or to do yourself or somewhere else? It will be. Uh, different, I think, in different countries, depending on how big music industry is there. Because most likely, if you start out in Germany or bigger market, maybe to gain some um, information how the industry works, it is valuable to start at some company or agency and then work with that. But at the same time, you can start yourself as well. So it will definitely depend on uh, where, which country or where you are. As I said, uh, uh, for myself, when I started out, basically it was a, a music TV program first, and then it was a record label. But at the time, nobody was knowing how to do things or how to work internationally. It was just pure, uh, uh, pure kind of uh, passion and uh, just uh, let's do it. We can. So, and only then you gain some experience and knowledge how it works. Uh, but that, doesn't matter how you begin. Yeah, I think you just got to take it from somewhere. That is either you find your your buddy artist who needs a management and you just try out. I mean, I, I've, I've always been a fan of, of trial and error. And that's still what I do. Um, <clears throat> Though of I, I I mean I I worked also for uh, for bigger agencies and and so on. Um, but but really in terms of management i think there are only in in the us and the uk these proper management firms that really only do management and in i think in almost every other market you will always be connected to like an a booking agency that also has a management branch or a, you're also the publisher you the, the the label and so on of course there's a lot of question marks about double dipping and so on and so on but i mean that's just how it rolls in most of the markets that 
you know, you're you're the booking agent, and then you kind of advance in in doing way more stuff for the artist than just a UK agent would do to get his ten percent commission, and then you're you're kind of becoming the manager. It just makes sense that you uh, that you study really well how the um, economic relations are because if you start off as a booking agent and you do all these services, then it's really hard at at a, at a certain point once you realize you do more work and you're you're the de facto manager to tell the artist well look there's not only the booking fee but there's also my fifteen to twenty percent commission and then the artist say hold on. What is this? So um, now I said that you, that you have all that that knowledge accessible on on platforms and courses and so on and so on. It just makes makes sense to explain and and study really well how the economic relations work in the um, in in the music business. So once you start out with an artist or or really young, you already know what to expect further down the line. But uh, yeah, if you start out as as a label or as a booking agent or as a as as a publisher or whatever, I think you can take it from from any angle and then just just kind of discover the other the other fields that you need to be good in. And I just can add that uh, starting with the uh, working with a new act and. Uh, it is very important and I think it's very valuable uh, to kind of uh, talk to and to inform them how it works and why, what is this deal and how does it work and so on and so on. And uh, uh, when we did uh, uh, a publishing deal, uh, we had uh, uh, a lawyer from uh, Netherlands uh, because, as I said, we are small market, but we're here and you can't find, you wouldn't find the uh, a lawyer uh, doing your publishing deal international over here and and it was that uh, we had one hour talk on skype where all band members were sitting and going through the deal and he was explaining every bit and piece so that they understand what is there and now after six years when uh, sometimes i hear some interviews uh, the band is giving on some uh, media and they talk about industry i can uh, happily say, I'm very proud. They have learned. So, uh, so uh, yeah. So, so I think it is it is very important for the manager to kind of, especially with the young artists, also easier for the manager later on because uh, they will learn how it works and there will be no uh, questions out of the school which doesn't work like that. So I think that's important for the manager to. Uh, to keep, uh, especially young artists, uh, knowledge about how the industry works, yeah, and it will be, as I said, easier for the manager later on as well. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I figured. Generally, if you have an up and up and coming artist that hasn't seen the shit yet, then you just give him a, a piece of paper, and they're probably gonna sign it without even reading it. But I think that's that's the worst, uh, and uh, you you should definitely. It, they were also that I, I had another band that I was working with for a while and we spent a lot of time to, to explain actually what contracts they had already signed and what it what it means and if they should do uh, continue doing this or, or not and I think that's to get that that kind of knowledge that you don't get surprises further further down the line I think that's uh, that's really super important. Oh, what what team members you should get in uh, first? Yeah, good question. It depends on I think on uh, on who you can actually find and who is most excited to to uh, to work with a band. Sometimes you don't find a manager yet, so. I like as as a first point because uh, as as management uh, you uh, you know you work a lot and they said you you never see any money um, in definitely not in the beginning so uh, experienced managers will be probably hesitating in getting in taking on new talent so if you 
try to approach a management first, then you, I mean, you have to be probably incredibly fantastic that somebody says, yeah, I'm, I'm going to work with you no, no matter what. So, uh, probably the last one that I would approach is a publishing because they most of them are a bit passive uh, and anyway um, I mean you, you can work also with publishing representation on a yearly or, or be it by annual basis and and it doesn't really matter and and usually if you have a publishing reaching out very early uh, I, I never had a great experience with such a thing there's there's a few ones like uh, that's for instance pair music in italy that have a fantastic team and are very proactive and signing a lot of cool new stuff and 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 it's really good but also they want the maximum life of copyright full share of publishing so you know if if you sign up with such a company and you want the service then you got to know if you sign the deal that it's going to be forever and um, it's really hard to get out of such agreements at, at a later point so i would generally suggest whatever type of team member you find never sign anything that is a very long-term thing and uh, and make sure that everybody's excited anyway i mean that's of course like local local customs let's say in in Italy, the the self understanding of publishings and labels is still we own the masters, we own the publishing side, and not yeah uh, we're um, uh, we're a service provider. Hold on, Q and A section. Sorry. Ooh, well, there's a few questions here. Una, uh, do you want to get back to those? Uh, yes, I'm reading now. About the communication image 50-50 manager artists, or should the artist decide 80-20 over the manager if they don't agree 100%? Uh, decisions about, I think if I got it, got it right the question is about how to decide uh, what is communication and the image of the band i think it should be uh, should be the artist call first because that's uh, uh, that's their image what they are going for so yeah i think it's uh, it should be the artist first yeah i think it should be artists first and artists last because they have to live with the with the pictures and with the videos and everything for quite a long time and yeah, i mean I, yeah it's it, it, it's them i mean you you might have some intelligent ideas to throw in but um yeah i would uh, i would suggest it's it's pretty much the artist um like in all crimes then just reading the other question oh positive things that the virus can bring to music business i think the only thing that is positive is that artists now finally wake up and understand their right situations and uh, actually look into their own business now that they have some time and think about if what the what their team had done in the past is really so uh, so great and um, make sure that you know all the all all the rights are being correctly registered now that you have some time that is definitely that is i think a positive thing that uh, you know i i think the the neighboring rights collecting societies and so on will will have received massive amounts of new subscriptions because if you've got nothing else to do than filling out spreadsheets. Um, but other than that, I, I don't really see a lot of positive development thanks can, to the pandemic. I can add one thing, like, uh, as I said, we are in uh, a bit different situation where the gigs are still happening. And because, of course, international artists can't travel here because of all the restrictions and quarantines, 
there is, uh, especially at the beginning, when, uh, it was, of course, like we have 50 percent capacity, the prices, ticket prices for the local artists are higher than they used to be. And people are paying that because before it was uh, uh, that like uh, euros, that's fine. Uh, but for local, uh, you were expecting that they will be much, much more fortunate than international acts coming and also the capacities are reduced it is possibility to put higher fee uh, for the ticket for the local artists and the audiences are accepting that so that's gonna for, from the local perspective and uh, most likely uh, the next year uh, as well will be uh, for more local artists and maybe local scenes will be more important and more flourish in those territories where, of course, this uh, will be possible, which is, um, it is, I, I, I don't want to say it's, uh, it's like a positive in general, but that's something that uh, uh, for the local artists maybe will be a bit, uh, a bit better. Yeah, uh, not so great for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most of my artists that are looking into touring internationally. So, uh, but yeah, that. Uh, I mean, if if yeah, I think it's yeah. I mean, it's it's also worth a discussion now with promoters and so on. Uh, how to um, to make sure that prices don't explode or significantly drop when this is over. I think it's now the right time to look into like um, old contracts and and the way people were used to do things and just re rethink pretty much from from zero in uh, like deal structures and so on but well we'll we'll see if that's going to happen. Yeah, I think uh, the hour has passed. And, uh... I think we should uh, thank everybody who joined us. And, uh, if my connection was a bit uh, at places, uh, uh, not as well, just because uh, driving. So yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks to everybody for getting up so early. Um, and um, yeah. Re reach out on on LinkedIn or wherever. Yeah, let's jump to the next session. Cheerio. Bye bye, everybody. Ciao, ciao.